Welcome back, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we're going to head into our demo sessions. The way it's going to work, like I mentioned earlier, is we're going to have four demos with five-minute breaks in between. But before we jump in, I just wanted to uh, give a quick recap from some of the uh, wonderful uh, panel discussions we had. So in the platforms discussion, one of the things to highlight was that, you know, Doug Stanley from Neo said, we need to put users first to solve the real problems. Uh, you know, in the DevTools discussion, we had, um, you know, a gentleman from the Linux Foundation who runs all C lines say, look, you know, OEMs for the next step really want a partner ecosystem. In industrial, we had some veterans come on and, and somebody mentioned that, you know, from a manufacturer's perspective, what they really care about are costs, uh, cut, you know, reducing costs and optimizing performances. And lastly, uh, Chris Ruland was a pleasure to watch uh, from Bastille. Um, he mentioned that, you know, no one's going to be able to patch all of these devices in an IoT enterprise. And so we need to come up with different solutions and different methods. Um, so again, with all that being said, it's been a great day of panels and keynotes, but now on to the hands-on portion of the day. Uh, at this point, I'm actually going to hand it over to uh, a lady from Zatar, um, Zebra Technologies, who's actually going to talk a little bit about their platform and what they're up to. So at this time, I'm going to hand it over to Katie Nunez, who is the uh, marketing and communications and into new growth platforms at Zebra Technologies Corporations. Katie? Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Uh, as you just mentioned, my name is Katie Nunez, and I work at Zebra Technologies. My main focus is our IoT enterprise application enablement platform, which is called Zatar. So I'm also responsible for our public website content, our blog, and our social media channels. So feel free to reach out and know I'm on the other end. Uh, so today I'm going to go ahead and give you a fairly high-level overview of the actual Zatar platform. So maybe you've heard about Zebra's IoT platform. Uh, maybe you've heard the word Zatar, but you don't really know what it is. Or maybe it's all kind of new to you, and you're just eager to learn more. So it's really important to understand uh, the basics. So again, um, Zatar is Zebra's IoT application platform. It's being developed in Zebra's Chicago-based office with the New Growth Platforms team called the Zatarians. The solution is cloud-based. It's for enterprise users, and it's centered around the concept of the avatar. So Zatar, even in name, is all about the avatar. It's a mashup of two terms, Zebra, avatar. So what exactly is an avatar? I'll go ahead and share uh, my screen here. Avatars are digital representations of, uh, or virtual visualizations that represent devices on the internet. So I hope everybody can see, um, I'm showing my LinkedIn profile. So most of us have worked with avatars before, but may not have even really realized it. If you have a LinkedIn profile, that means you already have an avatar on the internet yourself. So just like my LinkedIn profile is my avatar, which is a collection of properties and data points about me, so are Zatar's avatars to the devices within your world. So I'm going to go ahead and show a few different kind of avatars that exist within Zatar. So it's really kind of important to understand that while I'm going to go ahead and focus specifically on um, printers during my presentation, Zatar really is expandable to so much more. So some of the avatars that we're looking at here are, for example, a uh, connected wine rack, a uh, smart bike, a vending machine. So on the left, what we're seeing is we're seeing the physical devices as they exist in the real world. And on the right-hand side, we're seeing the different avatars that exist in Zatar. So there's sensor data, there's commands that can be sent to these devices, there's information about the devices and activity feeds. And we'll go a little bit further into that as I take you on a tour through my world. But it's also important to understand what a world is. So I'll share with you now, uh, we're looking at a world right now. And so this world is my world. And it's kind of like an account on any social networking um, platform, for example. It's basically an online place where users and members can manage and maintain their devices. They can also collaborate easily with other members of Zatar, other members that they've invited to their world. Uh, and I can go ahead and touch on that a little bit later. But I wanted to mention the fact that Zatar is a three-pronged approach to an IoT platform. So we focus on three things. We have an open uh, industry standard RESTful API. 
And this enables application developers to deliver rich customer experiences to their users without really having to focus on what's going on in the back end of things. And that's where Zatar serves as a really rich middleware for that type of a solution. There's also our device library, and this provides manufacturers, equipment manufacturers, device manufacturers, a way to ensure that their devices are Zatar enabled at the onset. And that also ensures that their customers receiving those devices can rest assured that they'll have a place to go and interact with and manage those devices the moment that they receive them, because they'll be able to use them through the Zatar uh, IoT platform. So earlier today, um, Tom Baraducci, who's actually our director of platform marketing, sat on a panel that was mentioned, um, the evolution of IoT platforms. And he said, let application developers and equipment manufacturers do what they know best. Why make them relearn stuff? And that's really kind of the focus here at the Zatar platform. We make it easy to scale and enable people to write applications using any tools that they want to use. Um, we really aim to kind of keep it simple. And so we get into the Zatar web application. It offers an out-of-the-box uh, IoT solution for businesses that just want an easy and reliable way to securely manage and uh, maintain their devices. So I'll jump right in. So right now we're looking at Zatar.com. This is our public-facing website for the Zatar platform. I'll just mention that we're undergoing a big overhaul, so check back in a couple of weeks to see a lot of changes on the website, and I would direct you specifically to this Developers tab in a few weeks. We're really working to make it a rich resource for developers. So let's start by logging into the platform. So I'm logging in right now with my own user credentials, and we're going to look at my world first. So here what we have is a collection of different worlds of which I'm a member. So my main world, the one that I own, is here, and that's called Zatari and Katie. I'm also a member in the printer demo world. So I'll probably be bouncing between the two worlds here as I drive you through the web application. So going back to worlds, it's really important to think of Zatar kind of as like the universe, and then the individual worlds that live within it are sort of just like little pieces of a greater ecosystem. And by having a number of different worlds residing within the same greater ecosystem, it makes collaboration between worlds and between users and sharing data across the platform. Okay. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. We're, we're not seeing your screen right now, so if you could just try and share your screen so everybody can see. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Yep. Let's see where I was here. Yeah, so going back to the worlds, um, We'll start by navigating my world. Um, it's pretty bare, um, but that's why we'll bounce between the two different worlds. So starting out, we can have a look at, just a second here, sorry. Have a look at the members tab. So the members here provides an overview of the different people that you've invited to your world and thereby who have access to your devices and their data. You can click on a member and see contact information about that member. Um, you can sort members by location, name, company, or if you have a really long members list, you can always narrow it down by uh, using the app-wide search functionality to locate specific members by maybe name or email address. One of the beauties of Zatar is you can go ahead and really control who has access to your world. So I'm going to start by inviting somebody. You will need the email address of the person you want to invite. In this case, I'm going to invite Zatari and Bob. And I can go through and I can invite as many or as few people as I'd like. And then I'll go ahead and send the invite. And once he, uh, once he accepts the invitation, he'll show up here in this list. And then if I no longer want him to be part of the list, I can simply go up here and remove that member, thereby revoking his access to my world. And this really just helps to emphasize how easy it is to collaborate with others. Um, we can also maintain different device privacy settings, so let's go ahead and add a device to the, uh, to the world here. I'll start by selecting Add Device, and I'll choose Add Device manually. I'll start by adding a gateway, which is referred to as an edge box here in our uh, web application, and select a device model if prompted. You'll have to enter the unique device identifier exactly as it appears on the gateway. In this case, it's just going to be a test device, so I'll just put test gateway one, two, three. 
Then I have an offline avatar created. What that means is this unique device identifier has been claimed and associated with my world. So as soon as this device comes online and starts broadcasting its data, it's going to be received by my world and presented here in my web application. So I'll give it a name. This is something that's unique to me and my collaborators, something that I can use to easily identify this particular device, and a location. Now you'll see that my gateway is listed here in my device list. It's in a claim state. As I just mentioned, that's where that particular device identification number has been reserved for my use. Of course, this device is in a claim state because it's not a real device. Um, when I'm no longer needing this device, I can simply go here and delete it from my world, which does two things. It removes it from my world, and it also releases its identification numbers. So if I needed to add it to another world, for example, or transfer it to a different user, I could certainly do that. Another feature of Zatar is the ability to control access to devices. Um, that's something that's really important to a lot of users. They want to know that their devices are either private for their, um, their use only, or maybe shared with other members. Or maybe there's a reason you'd want to make your device public for all of Zatar to see. So in order to do that, it's pretty easy. You just select the device. And in the cog wheel here, you just change its access. So here I'll go ahead and set my uh, QLN 320 printer to public. I'll confirm that. And by doing that, once I navigate into the public world, I can search for it. And I see that it's here in the public world. When I no longer want it to be public, it's super simple. I just go back into my private world, and I change its access back to private. And then my members, or my collaborators and I are the only ones who will be able to, to use it then from within the web application. Uh, let's see what else we can do. Um, let's look at some live devices so we can see some of the data points that they provide. Back in the printer demo uh, world here, we can look at one of these live printers. The first thing to note is it's going to provide its sensor data here, as well as its status. So this device is online, up and running, and these different sensor sensors are reporting back that everything is A-OK. -okay. We can also see things such as device information, serial number, MAC address, and we can see the firmware. We can choose to upgrade or roll back firmware. Uh, and just send it down to the device, thereby updating it here from the web application. We can send test prints and do other types of commands. Um, for other devices, these types of commands would be different. But we can visualize what's happening with the device here in the recent activity stream feed. And this really lends itself well to a big feature in Zatar, which is capturing analytic data and then presenting it across uh, you know, other applications or even this application as data points that can be used to um, sort of make better, better business decisions along the way. Uh, another feature that we have um, that's kind of a new and exciting one is our feature of automations. And automations really lets you set up events and notifications for your devices. This is a feature that's available to owners of worlds, so your members won't be able to set them up at this time. So I'm going to go ahead and create an automation for a printer. I'll select a QLN 320. And let's just say this is my status notification. And I want to be notified whenever this device goes offline. And I want to be sent an email. So I'll go ahead and enter the recipient. Um, at this time, I'll just send myself the email. And we'll see it added here to my list of notifications and automations. So whenever my QLL, QLN 320s go offline, I will be sent a notification email here. And this really enables use cases such as like predictive maintenance, being able to step in and stop a problem before it becomes something that could really you know, cost a company a lot of money and bring on a lot of costly overhead. Another feature uh, across the TAR is the ability to group your devices. This is something that's very helpful if you have a very large list of devices. So what we would do is simply create device group. And then from within this group, I can add different devices. Maybe I want to add all of the QLN 320s in my account.
And instead of looking at a very large list then of all of the devices in my account, I'm simply looking at those that are within that group. And this is extremely helpful if I have a profile, for example. And a profile is just a grouping of settings uh, for a specific device. So in this case, we'll make a QLM320 device profile. And we'll adjust our settings that we'd like to have deployed. This is helpful when you have, again, like I said, a large list of devices and you need to maybe adjust all of the settings at once. We can simply go here and we can assign the profile to all of the devices within that group. And so what it'll do is instead of going one by one, as we would normally do maybe in this instance here, and have to update the settings one by one, we'll be able to assign a profile to it. Likewise, if a profile has been added to a printer and a user tries to adjust its settings, he'll have to remove the profile beforehand. And I think that's a pretty good overview of what we have on Sitar at this time. Um, if there's any questions or comments, you can definitely, I'm open. Yeah, great. So Katie, first off, thank you so much for uh, you know talking with us and giving us kind of an overview of the platform. Um, one of the things that we always like to ask the you know demo participants um, is if you know you could give us just a brief uh, overview of a customer use case where Zatar is in use today and and how it's providing a, a return on investment for that customer. Yeah, that's a very interesting question that you bring up. Uh, something that I didn't mention that I think was brought up a little bit earlier in one of the panels is that so we're still in a public beta. So while we do have some customers, they are uh, beta customers, and we're working very closely with them to ensure that the features that we're implementing are those that really sort of suit their needs. Great. Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we look forward to uh, participating with you on other events in the future, and really appreciate you giving the community an overview on what Zatar is up to. Absolutely. I really appreciate it, and we'll have a look at Zatar.com and reach out. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Have a good one. You as well. Bye-bye.